It's the third game of the evening, ladies and gentlemen. We're on Frozen Temple, spawning to the top left in... Pink. <laughs> it's Lady Azalus as Protoss. And to the bottom right in purple, we have our German player, Mitsukotze. It's a ZVP, ladies and gentlemen. And um, we'll see how this is going to work out. So, as a list, just going for the wall off at the bottom of the ramp. That's something you can do, especially on this base, uh, on this map, sorry. Um, because you only need three buildings in order to do make this a complete wall off, if you need to. Uh, normally, you don't want to have a complete wall off. You just want to have a wall off with a small, narrow gap where you can just position one unit in order to seal everything off against uh, army units. But uh, yeah, on this uh, on this map, it's actually done quite easily. But of course, like we've said before, there's a very short rush distance from your natural to your opponent's natural. So even if you manage to get up this wall uh, quite easily, if your opponent really commits to an early attack, it might still be problematic to hold. Uh, especially since this pylon is pretty much forward and you have a lot of surface area that links can attack. I think there's one, two, three, four, even five, maybe even all six links can actually, I think it's five. I think four to five links should be able to attack this pylon and they can tear it down quite easily. And it's a bit difficult to wall off this section once more because this is the ramp. So even if you throw down another building uh, down here, this ramp will probably be open to links streaming into your main base. So, and, and sometimes you, can, you can't even really build something here because these unbuildable rocks are also in the way and the ramp is in the way as well. So yeah, so an, an early committed attack can cause you some trouble. But um, most of the time, players just decide against it. Because it's still, uh, for a Zerg player, it's always pretty all in to build early army units. Or to build army units that are early in the game. Okay, uh, in the meantime, we just have a pretty normal opening. We will just see whether Mitsukotsu wants to commit to a heavy attack or if she wants to go into a macro game. Um, by the timing, she just wants to take her third base, and I think she wants to do it right now. So yeah, this is just a small little push, trying to make something happen, trying to see what your opponent is up to, maybe even nibbling away some shields and some hit points on some of these buildings. Just the usual stuff, something you can do. So, but the photon overcharge already available, uh, as well as fires it up immediately. Even that, a small little victory by Mitsukatsu, because now the Mothership core has to gain more energy. Uh, en energy! More energy! You know, has to gain. There was the normal G. Has to gain uh, more energy before it can throw down another photon overcharge. And even if it will have one available once the, the next push uh, arrives at Azalea's base, it will be one photon overcharge less than normal. So, yeah, even a small little victory over here. I think Mitsukotsu are just trying to get more map vision with these links, right? So just spreading out those links towards uh, to all across the map, uh, scouting for maybe even for proxy positions, getting uh, a vision of the third base, getting vision of the pathway, the ground pathway towards her own base. So yeah, I actually totally love this scouting by Mitsukotsu with a six for, uh, with a six first links because she doesn't have any, um, oh, actually only four, weren't there more? I think there were more links, right? Weren't there six links? Doesn't matter. Still, she did really. Uh, she did really well by spreading these links over there. I think that's something that every Zerg player should copy, especially in that map. Since these uh, watchtowers got removed from the map in one patch, it's very difficult to keep track of your opponent's army movement on that map. So I just love this move by Mitsukatsu. Uh, just getting more vision with her first links. Okay, just trying to get forward, trying to get a vision. If some units have already been positioned down here, so she could even get a short vision of what her opponent's up to. Now flying in with a speed overlord after speed being done, trying to gather as much information as possible. She's seen the gateway over here. Now is going to see all the other gateways and all the other tech that she could ever wish for. So right now she actually knows everything. Uh, has seen the Twilight Council researching something. 
That's of course a big problem as a Zerg player. You can see the Twilight Council researching, but right now you just don't know whether it's going to be Zealot speed or the attack speed for the Adepts, the Resonating Blades. You normally know that a Warp Prism attack of some kind is coming if the Robotics facility is there and you see a lot of gateways, because Warp Prisms are usually the best way to reinforce your army right now. I mean, of course, you can always try to establish some sort of forward pylon with a gateway, but it's easier to scout and thus easier to take out for the opponent. So you normally want to have the warp prism down here. Ooh, even just warping in all of the units right in front of that poor little Zirkling. But of course, Mitsukotsu now absolutely knows what's coming away. The question is, will she be able to defend it? Uh, Lady Azalus has crushed a lot of her opponents or has actually just crushed her last opponent, which I think was Suno Kazui, uh, in the last match. That was also a PvZ. She used this build a lot of times. As she stated herself, she abused the shit out of it in order to take down Suno Kazui uh, with, two day, with two base pushes, which caused actually a lot of trouble to Suno Kazui. But Mitsukatsu, of course, is the player of another caliber. So let's see if she will be able to tear down this push uh, more easily. Ooh, even focus firing down that mothership core, so no recall there for the Immortals. And now the Immortals have to retreat. Ooh, Azalus really has to be careful, yeah. And now the Dark Templar even moving in. There's no vision here available for Mitsukatsu, so she has to deal with the Dark Templar as well. Probably now realizes that there's something invisible just killing her units. Uh, where's the Overseer? Two Overseers being morphed, but of course for now there's nothing really she can do against these army units. Just trying to tear down the Zealots, uh, the, one, uh, the few units that she can actually see. And, uh, well, the Overseer won't take forever and they even have uh, the Overlord speed already. So it should be pretty easy for her to take out the rest of her army once she spotted it. There it is. Now she goes on. Azalus tries to rescue maybe some of the valuable units. No, she even tries to go more in, just warping right in front of an army. I don't know if that really is a vice decision. But it seems as if Azalus just has run out of her smarts, doesn't know what else to do. Gigi's out and Mitsukatsu takes the first game. So it's the second map of the series. We're on Frost again, spawning to the top left position in pink. It's Lady Azalus. Being down 1-0. And to the bottom left in purple, we have Mitsukatsu. So, let's see what Mitsukatsu is up this time. Taking an early hatchery, which is quite common on this map. It's such a big map and the risk of being rushed by your opponent is very, very small. And in this case, it's actually non-existent because your opponent just went for a Nexus first, her own. Um, yeah, same thing. Azalus just thinks that she can do this because the map is just so big. And then again, if you know Mitsukatsu, she's not that uh, aggressive uh, a player. I mean, of course, she sometimes throws in something really risky or something really unexpected, like this early third base. So three base before pool. Quite interesting, actually. Just tries to overrun her opponent economi uh, economically in the mid-game, probably. So we'll see how this is going to work out. Because this is when her economic advantage will just hit the hardest. While uh, Azales is just um, trying to wall off her base completely, it seems. I don't know if this small little gap is just enough for a unit. We'll see in just a few minutes when she either puts the probe in here or through here. Uh, maybe even a zealot or an adept, or maybe even a stalker in here. So we see that. So Mitsukatsu just having her second overlord flying towards the right position. So she's going to spot where her opponent is in just a few seconds, already realizing that she's not over here. And uh, in the meantime, she's just established some gas, now waiting for the typical 100 gas in order to get the spawning pool done. Probably, maybe she even wants to get risky and uses the first 100 gas in order to get down her lair more fast, uh, more fast, uh, faster. What am I talking about? But probably not, because there's still a queen working in, so I think the first 100 gas will be synced, or will be sink, sink, sunk, will be sunk <laughs> into this spawning pool and the speedling upgrade. So Mothership Core in production, and as we can see, there is a small little gap down here, which Azalet just fits perfectly in. 
So, fills out. So, this was actually what I wanted to say. Fills out perfectly. So, Mitsukatsu again, using some of her links in order to get the best scouting possible done. She just checks for third base, which is probably not going to happen, I uh, just assume. I think, it's, uh, I think Lady Azalus just uh, knows that her best chances of beating Mitsukatsu are uh, well-timed pushes that um, may overwhelm her opponent who's underprepared, but I think she's quite certain that she won't be able to beat Mitsukatsu in a straight-up macro game. So I think we, again, are going to see Lady Azalus going for a two-base timing attack. Stargate already incoming. Oh, a little bit of a switcheroo here. So let's see what she's going to do with that Stargate if she tries to get some harassment done with an Oracle or if it's just going to be some sort of odd water rip. Which no, it's actually Phoenix! Wow! Okay, the common, quite common Phoenix play actually, but uh, I didn't really expect Azalus to do that. So Phoenixes are a very potent unit if used by a capable player. And by that I don't want to say that Azalus is not a competent player. But um, normally you just see these being used well in Masters and Grandmasters upwards. And even Masters players uh, oftentimes have a lot of problem using these Phoenixes accordingly. Because you have to move them around quite a lot. Uh, you just have to make a lot of damage with them, keeping your opponent pinned back. Because you're, if your opponent just manages to catch some breath and realizes uh, that you only have a few air units walking around, she can just produce a hell of a lot of ground units walking across the map and just kill you straight up. So you have to do a lot of economic damage with your phoenixes, just killing off a lot of drones, uh, picking off a, uh, um, a queen here and there, maybe even getting a drone that tries to build another base and everything. And in order to do that, you really have to keep up with your micro because doing all that damage with your phoenix phoenixes doesn't help you if you're not capable of producing more uh, units and buildings at home at the same time, just macroing well. And doing this at once, managing your phoenixes, managing your home base, is an actually very difficult task to do um, if you're not uh, the highest caliber of play. And um, yeah, so I'm a little bit surprised by that choice into phoenixes. We'll see if it's going to work out for her or not. So as it is now, just uh, uh, then, of course, going into a third base. This is uh, not a cheese build like the one she did before, but um, uh, a really straight up macro build, and uh, thus she just has to go into a third base. Maybe surprising all of us by that decision. Okay, there's the first spore crawler on the third base. A little bit late, maybe, but maybe Mitsukatsu was also not expecting something like that to happen. And here the first few probes are already dying, even taking up, lifting up a queen, now even trying to kill that. But this is now actually what I was talking about. Mitsukatsu has already built up a considerable amount of ground force, and uh, she's now probably just walking into the third base and tearing it down. There's actually not much that can really um, keep her from doing so. Of course, again, with good Phoenix micro, you can do a lot. It's five phoenix, no, six phoenixes by now. So you can actually just lift up to six units to take them out of the fight for just a few moments while the rest of your army just kills uh, what's there on the ground. But Lady Azalus just doesn't have enough, realizes it immediately, GG's out, and Mitsukatsu takes the game 2-0. So, we're back on Sejong Station for the third map of this series, spawning to the bottom right in pink. It's Azalus. And to the top left in purple we have Mitsukatsu leading 2-0. She only needs to win one more game. And thus far she didn't really have a big problem fending off either Lady Azalus early, well quite cheesy push she did in the first game. It was very aggressive and all-in. Uh, so of course you can always talk about and discuss whether an all-in is always cheesy or not. Uh, I would say that oftentimes all-ins are also pretty cheesy, but of course that's up to discussion. It was an all-in build, it failed, and uh, Azalus tapped out right after she realized that it failed. And in the next game she tried to go into a macro game using an early Phoenix build, even managed to do some damage, but by that time Mitsukatsu had already built up 
quite a fearsome ground force. Just went into the third base. There was nothing there to defend it. Well, not literally, but only four depths, I think. And uh, a lot of Road Ravager, so Lady Azalus just had to tap out once more. And uh, this time she just goes for the more safer opening uh, gateway first and then into a Nexus down here. Uh, that's very common on this map. Again, we're uh, here where I can just talk about how friggin' large this entrance to your natural base is. And it's really difficult for any player, be it Terran or Protoss, to wall this area off. So, of course, you want to have a pylon down here as soon as possible, and you want to have even even at least maybe even more than one pylon. And, of course, you want to have a mothership core as soon as possible as well in order to fire up this photon overcharge. Actually, I don't like this pylon positioning uh, down here because it doesn't really cover anything. I mean, it covers this area over here, but this is not really an area where a Zerg player would want to attack. So if some early links, for example, were to run by, they could just, yeah, run by that pylon into the mineral line, and then this pylon just doesn't cover the mineral line and not protecting it. And uh, even if you, I mean, it might cover this little small area over here, so if you have a zealot over here and links try to walk in, it might be able to shoot that part of the, of the ramp, but why would you want to put the pylon overcharge uh, here anyways, since you have this pylon over here. So like I said, I, I would rather like this pylon being closer to this base, or even being maybe, maybe somewhere over here, so you would at least cover part of the mineral line if your opponent tried to attack it, but at that point, right over here, I think it's not really doing anything. So, having talked about that pylon quite a lot, we'll just have a look into what um, these two women are up to. Mitsukot's just going for the early link speed, not going for a third base that early on. I mean, between three and four minutes is usually the timing where a Zerg player wants to take her base, even a bit earlier if possible. While in the meantime we have the robotics bay already down for Lady Azalus. It seems, and uh, Twilight Council going down, it seems as if she wants to stick back to her guns and try to cheese her opponent once more, or all in her opponent once more, if you don't want to use the term cheese. Um, yeah, with the build we've seen so often out of her Warp Prism first, then going into two Immortals, getting more gateways up later on, uh, getting either Adapt Attack Speed or Zealot Speed, you can change that up a little bit, and then even going into DTs later on, so that the push, as we've seen it in the first game, will just hit somewhere close to the third base, and then she just moves everything in that she has, trying to deal a lot of damage with the Immortals and the Speed Lots while warping in some Dark Templars, that will also deal additional damage later on. So yeah, that's just the build she has done so often. It helped her very well against Simukazri and made her win that match. Uh, against Mitsukotsu it hasn't been that helpful right now. Even firing up the Photon Overcharge doesn't really want Mitsukotsu to, to see too much and to get too much information, but it's already too late. She's already seen the robotics facility being chrono boosted as well as the Twilight Council. So again, I'd say that Mitsukotsu knows exactly what she's up against. And uh, we'll uh, prepare for that accordingly. And this time, even this time, even going for an early lurk and then on two base, quite interesting here. Uh, that's something she didn't have last time, and she was still able to fend it off with lurkers in the mix and probably no observer. Okay, there is one observer on the way. It's even rallied behind the war prism. So actually, uh, Azalus accounts for that possibility. Uh, but still, an observer will take quite some time to cross the map in order to get there. Okay, Mitsukatsu are probably checking for a third base now. Yeah, and now she knows. So now now she definitely knows. I mean, she's she's already probably guessed what's coming her way um, pretty well before, but, but now she definitely knows that a two base timing is hitting her way. Uh, actually quite interesting with the links. You might want to try some sort of run by, which I don't think if it's going to be that... Um, if it's going to be uh, that uh, that well... Oh no, actually not. She just positioned one link over here at the watchtower. Doesn't really need to because she now knows that her opponent is trying to do the uh, all-out push. Ooh, even uh, just misclicking and hitting the stalker for a moment, even almost killing it there. 
a bit unfortunate here. Okay, a lot of army already in position. The first lurk is already being morphed. Once the lurkers are out, uh, this come, this uh, fight will become a lot more difficult for Azalis. Okay, right now Azalis just warping in more units, trying to establish uh, quite a big army force before him. Okay, now the lurkers are down. There's an overlord in a, um, overlord, an observer in position. So her opponent is would be able to see and shoot down the lurkers if she came close to it. But Hady Azalis just realizes that her all-in has been pushed away, has been held. GG's out, and Mitsukotsu takes the game. 3-0.